jump on here and have a little talk. Tomorrow, I will be... Make sure that my Bluetooth is working here. Make sure my headphones are on so the map will work for me. I believe the map map is working. Let me double, let me double check on that. Okay, so I just wanted to jump on for a couple of minutes and talk to you guys about what's going on here. Just a little bit of information. I will be tomorrow, and just so just so everybody understands, tomorrow I will be at the cafe again. I'll be at Traders, and several people who are armed are gonna meet me there because uh, just some different people have come around and uh, now the, the people of this town are so sick of the abuse that tomorrow when I'm at Traders, a couple guys are coming who are packing. Here in Ohio, you're allowed to open carry. And so I'll be, I'll be having meetings tomorrow and if you want, if you wanna meet with me privately, then I will, you can contact me. But the text messaging and email soon is not gonna work because there's just too many emails and too many text messages. There's that many people. You know, I told other auditors, and if other auditors wanna come down, I got an Airbnb and there's so many stories. There are so many stories. There's, there's so many, many, many people's stories that I can't, I'm gonna cover as many as I can, but the people of this town, Ironton, I told a couple of friends who are, who are also constitutionalist, civil libertarians, I said to them, you know, I got a feeling that that, that Ironton is just like, just like Brookside, Alabama, but it's worse. It's worse. I mean, how do I know? This could be called any town USA. And the reason why I'm just going live now is because I simply can't sit there and edit all of the videos. I, I, can't, I can't sit there and edit this many videos. There are too many videos to edit. There's too many videos. So I know I'm in the dark. I can't take any chances of driving with a light on or anything like that. I've gotta be careful not to be pulled over. Every single person and the people I talked to today, they were afraid, they were, they were scared. One lady came down, one lady came down and she was, she came down and when I said to her, when I said to her, we, we gotta put your, we gotta put your story on camera, she left. One, one lady came down to Trader's Cafe and when I said, she left, she, 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 she left, <laughs> she's afraid. And then one guy came down just now younger gentleman and he said he said chili my youth my whole youth was spent running from the police that's what he told me he said he said that the ironton police harassed him so much so much that it disbanded him and his group of friends that's what he told me he said to me i just can't do it he said we ended up just scrapping the click we had so he told me he wouldn't talk on camera. He wouldn't talk on audio. And then as far as the blanket ships, I, whoa, whoa. I know Derek came down and he said his daddy wasn't, wasn't involved in the drug business. What I'm going to do is post screenshots of the emails and text messages I got about Carl and about the boys. Apparently the people here, and I have, I have proof of this. The people here are saying that Carl Blankenship is the biggest drug dealer in town and that his two boys run cover for him as police officers. That's what I'm being told. And I will post the screenshots as soon as I get parked. I'll post them so that it backs up the words I'm telling you now. When I said I need information about the Blankenships, one person emailed me and said, I was listening to the interview you were doing with Derek Blankenship, who went on camera. 
and she said as soon as he said his dad doesn't deal drugs I had to stop watching I had to walk out the door I was furious that's what the person said and the person said not only is he a drug dealer his boys are working for him as police officers I'll post a screenshot of the email why, why would I, why would someone say that to me why would if people hate Carl or hate the two cops why wouldn't they just say I hate those dirty pigs like I do because they're scum but scum using the law to bully me and that's why I hate cops so much just so you guys know because they bullied me physically as a kid and when I could have whooped their butts like yesterday when I went to the courthouse and they put their hands on me those were four dudes who weighed a total of maybe 700 pounds and they were frail and I just had to let them do what they were doing to me even though they were violating my rights I don't get to defend myself and that makes me mad so so come on come on dude just just I get it I get it I get it I get it I'm in I'm in I'm in I'm in rural America here so people don't drive quite like they do in LA I understand whatever so now let me talk about two different things here because I don't have time to do anything I got to get home and get these voice memos So here's the thing, I can't edit all this stuff together, there's too many people, there's too many people. So you gotta come down and meet me at Trader's Cafe tomorrow. That's where I'm gonna go. Make sure you buy a coffee from that guy. Make sure you buy a coffee from that guy when you come down. Nice people over there at Trader's. Uh, they're not involved with me, it was just a cafe I picked up. So, so nobody's they're not involved with me they're not friends of mine I don't know those people I'm just having my meetings there tomorrow and so so I need you on camera and and this is what's gonna segue into the next thing I'm talking about here and and change is happening right now at an extraordinarily dramatic rate because what you guys are witnessing is the culmination of the digital era coming to life and that's the new policing system that I devised. Just so you know, I'll let the cat out of the bag a little bit. The, na the name of the new system is called transparency. And I'm, that's all I'm gonna say and I'll get into that policing system. But you're about to see changes in leaps and bounds because of the camera. And we need to get the camera in the courtroom, at least the audio in the courtroom. That's what we need to do. I'm, I'm pulling over here and I don't wanna I don't want to go into a specific area of town and make sure that I don't have a, a dome light on or something. I don't want to give the cops any reason to pull me over because as you know, that may not go well. So I just want to make sure because I don't really, I don't, I don't, I don't grant dominion over my person to a pig because he pulled me over. I'm not going to sit on the curb or stay in my driver's seat or do this or do that because the cop wants to have dominion over me. Dominion meaning absolute and total control over my every motion. And so because of that, I, I don't want to take any chances when I pull into a new part of town. So so the reason why you're... And, and here's what's going to happen in Ironton. Those dirty pigs are going to be ran off. Those dirty pigs are going to be fired. Because there's so many people going on camera saying, Oh my God, look at this. And just so you guys know, when I run for governor... I'm running for governor now. When I run for governor, the camera's gonna see everything that I do. I'm gonna make government transparent because this is bullshit and we're not gonna take it. So I need you guys to put your face on camera. I put five or six people faces on camera today. My God, Ted Sprouse's story of his dogs being kidnapped and then the story of Jason Newman. The story of Jason Newman and what he did, how he got into a car accident, and then he hurt that woman. I posted their name in the community. I wanna to talk to that family, and then, oh, is that a one-way street? No, it's, that's not a one-way street. And then, and then, and then, Jay, and then Jason Newman called his own friends in to investigate, and they gave him a ride home real quick. What? What? You can't even drive down the street. You're not even allowed to drive down the road without being DUI checkpoint. But Jason Newman gets into a car accident and his friends come and pick him up 
And then the girlfriend, when they break up, she spills the beans to the United States Human Defense League in Texas. What? And there's an audio recording of it? Yep, there sure is. And so, so now what you guys are going to see that's going to happen over the next couple years, over the next year for sure, over the next couple years, is the dirty cops are going to be ran... The dirty cops are going to be ran off. They're going to be ran off. And the reason they're going to be ran off is because of the camera. It's because of the camera. I can't help anybody without this camera running. Can't do it. You're going to see blank for a second. I got to look at the map. Hold on. So I'll, I'll pull over here for a second, turn the lights on and just finish this conversation with you guys. And then I got to go in and take the audio I do have. One woman about Carl Blankenship. One woman who told me her story about Carl Blankenship. You have to hear her words. I can't do it any justice. I can't tell you how powerful this woman's words are about Carl Blankenship. I just, I can't, I can't explain it. I can't put it into words. It's so explosive that there's just no way to, to, to see it other than just absolute and total validation that Blankenship is what he is. Blankenship is what he is. And that we absolutely have to get rid of those Blankenships as cops. You can't be a cop helping your dad run drugs. And I'm not afraid one single bit. Because my whole life, I've had to fight for everything I've ever done, everything I've ever gotten. Listen, nobody's life is a bowl of cherries. And mine's no different. So... I'm not saying anything that everybody else hasn't gone through too. We've all been down the dirt road of life and had to get through the potholes. That does say police on it. I see a police cruiser up there. And you know me, I just immediately want to go over there and have a conversation with that copper, but I'm not going to. So you guys are about to see everything change over the next couple years. And the reason why everything's going to change is because with the digital era, everything's going to be caught on camera now. Every single thing is going to be caught on camera now. You guys just saw the video I put up of McKnight tasing that guy. He's trying to put his hands behind his back. He's trying a couple times. He's telling the cops when they got him one around the neck and McKnight's trying to get him. He's telling him, I give up. I surrender. But McKnight wants to tase him. So he tases him. The guy puts his hands behind his back. He tases him again. And now that we can all see how cops treat human beings, it's atrocious. There's no reason people need to be tased. We need to get rid of handcuffs, tasers, and attack dogs. You got a camera now. This camera, just so you know, is your gun. This is your new weapon. This is your new weapon right here. When the cops come up to you, you hold your camera up and say, you've been exposed. I plead the Fifth Amendment. Well, you don't have to say you've been exposed, but 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 the cops have been exposed. It, I, I'm just a new version of what you guys have already seen. And God bless those first men and women who were the auditors of America that showed us that these cops are treating people like their lives don't matter. It's not black lives don't matter. It's no lives matter. Not a single life matters. And then you know that's true when the first thing that happens to you if you get arrested, you get stuffed in the trunk of a car. No need for your feet, hard plastic, handcuffs, torture cuffs. I showed you guys on the video that I made about Yunez that handcuffs were created to torture you. Why are we still using those? I'm, I'm ranting. We know handcuffs were developed to torture black people who got in trouble. That's why handcuffs were created. Chain cuffs were created to chain slaves together. The history is clear. You guys can watch the video I produced. Uh, what was that video called? Torture cuffs? I can't remember. 
but it shows the actual slave cuffs, the reason why slave cuffs were created. It shows the actual slave cuffs. <laughs> and people wonder why there's a good portion of us who hate cops guts. I'm, I've been on the record, man. I've never changed my tune. You're scum. You signed up to be a pig, putting torture cuffs on people, tasers, nightsticks, attack dogs. You're the enemy, brother. You're the enemy. All you Kentucky cops talking. So I got several screenshots sent to me by a Kentucky cop. So I looked him up. We're about the same age. So I said, okay, brother, I can't fight everybody, but I'll fight you. I said, I'll fight you in a cage. We'll raise money for charity. And then crickets. They said that I should be put in jail. That's what the cops in Kentucky were saying. I'll, sh I'll post the screenshot that I belong going to jail. Why would you guys say that? If it's only a few bad cops, I'm exposing the bad ones for you. You're welcome. Or is that all bullshit? And they all do the same thing. Gosh, you know, I did this thing called reading and I read the Mullen Commission, and I read the Knapp Commission, and I read the Seabury Commission, and I scanned a lot of the Knapp Commission, of the Wickersham Commission. And you know what I read? That since policing has been militarized in 1929, that cops are dog shit. That's what I read. And that's 12 years of government study on cops. And the government studies all say you need a third party for oversight. All three commissions, including, and the fourth one, the Seabury. I don't know if the Seabury, I can't remember because the Seabury is the first one I ever took a look at. Ubiquitously, the three commissions that I know, the Knapp, the Wickersham, and the Mullen, they all say that we need a third party for oversight. So how good has it been allowing cops to clean up their own backyard? Jeff Lawless. Jeff Lawless, who said that, 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 that he... What's up, buddy? Excuse me, are you doing like a podcast or something like that? Yeah, man, I'm just talking on my phone real quick. Is that cool? Oh, yeah, it's fine. No, I just, it's, that's what I thought because it's how I heard you talking about government and stuff like that. I just thought it was cool. Yeah, I think cops are pigs, so I'm just talking out loud. Ah, okay. Okay, I just I wanted to answer your question, though. I don't want to be rude if you came up to talk to me. Man, no, you're fine. Oh, am I, am I too loud? Do you want me to shut this? Huh, no, nah, I just want, like, I just caught, I saw somebody sitting out here and I just, because. Oh, I respect just, that, brother. This is your neighborhood. This is where people park at when they come to my house and stuff like that. I'm going to be moving in a second. No, you're, you're fine. You can stay here as long as you want to. Okay. So just, okay. Nice, sir. Thank you, brother. Hey, so, what's your, uh, what's your podcast? delete laws. Here you go. Delete laws. He came up and asked me what I was doing in his neighborhood, and I just thought I would answer his questions because he's just a citizen that wants to know. I can't do it. Delete laws. L A W Z. All one word. Okay. All right. Yes, sir. You have oh, a good one. I'll see. I'll see you. Okay. So, so we've allowed police from August Volmer. August Volmer is a piece of, I mean, listen, I don't know the history. I don't know enough about August Volmer to say that he's garbage or not. I just don't know enough about him. I know he was a cop. So that tells you a lot right there. So, so since the beginning, police are formed. Let me just give you a real quick rundown here. Police are formed in 1704. Now there's bobbies and there's night patrol and all kinds of things we can get into, but the police are formed in 1704 officially, and the first police system is in South Carolina, and they're called the South Carolina Rangers. The Texas Rangers would later take the name Rangers from the South Carolina Rangers. So that's the inception of policing. And the organized police system is intended to get your slave back. And so then you fast forward to what's called the Missouri Compromise, and that's going to be in 18. 50 because Harriet Beecher Stowe's book's going to come out in 1852 called Uncle Tom's Cabin. So the Missouri Compromise, I think it happens 1849 or 1850. And what the United States has done is every bit of additional states that are added. And as you may well know, Florida is going to be added around 1846, 1847 by James Polk. James Polk is going to have the final Seminole Indian War in Florida. And then the reason why they're going to add California and, and they're going to add Florida is they can add Florida if they can take in the Northwest Territories and keep the fair, the fair balance of slave senators 
versus free state senators. That's why our country is in the disarray it is today. Because what the government did, the federal government, is they continually tried to placate to the southern states by giving them the same amount of representation as northern states, even though the population was three to one. And so they couldn't add Florida as a state until they had a balance of power, (laughs) a balance of tyranny, where you're going to have the same amount of slave states as you do free states. And so the 1850 Missouri Compromise for the state of Missouri to be both a slave state and a free state, whatever happens, happens. And so later, John Brown, I'm going to jump ahead a little bit, John Brown will go down to Missouri and say, well, if it's an equally free state, and we pretty much are still ruled under natural law, life, liberty, property by John Locke, Jean-Jacques Rousseau's social contract, and then Montesquieu's checks and balances on power, those two philosophies aren't quite as respected as John Locke's life, liberty, or property. So when John Brown goes into Missouri right after the 1850 Missouri Compromise, then John Brown says, well, these black folks have a right to liberty too. So John Brown slaughters five slave families. And that's not the the catalyst for the Civil War. What will be the catalyst for the Civil War when we now we've added, and just so you know, you know, when you talk about James Polk, the president from 1845 until 1849, you're talking about a guy who added the most to America besides Thomas Jefferson, who will sign the Louisiana Purchase in 1803. So both two guys, Thomas Jefferson and James Polk, those are the two guys who imperialized America to the point where we would go from coast to coast, from sea to shining sea. That comes after James Polk solidifies the Oregon Territory, the Northwest Territory. And the way James Polk gets the Northwest Territory is the Brits and the Canadians, they want one thing and Americans want to, I think it was the 52nd parallel or the 49th parallel on on a latitude map. And then Polk wants it, Polk just wants to cut the deal because he wants to get a deal done that gets America from coast to coast. So Polk, I think we settle on the 49th parallel so that that way Vancouver, the uh, Vancouver Island can remain a part of Canada. (laughs) I'm Alaskan, so sometimes we call it Canada. So anyway, the point is, the point is, is that at this point in our history, though, the police's function is this. The 1850 Missouri Compromise, where the North and the South sign a contract that says that if your runaway slave comes to the North because there's freedom and liberty up there, then the police can go up into the North and the Northern police agree that they will return your slave to slavery. Just where is the decency of humanity? If you told me I have to... So now here's what's going to happen. The Missouri Compromise is going to happen in 1850. I'm pretty sure someone fact-checked me on that. could be 1849. And then Harriet Beecher Stowe's book in 1852. Kind of ironic that, that Harriet Beecher Stowe's book is going to come out almost exactly 100 years after Jean-Jacques Rousseau's social contract. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. Montesquieu's book, Spirit of Laws, comes out in 1750 and then published in English in 1752. And Harriet Beecher Stowe's book is going to come out in 1850, 100 years later. Montesquieu's book, the series of, I think it's 27 volumes called The Spirit of Laws, that book is going to define the checks and balances system that our federal government is based on today, judicial, executive, legislative branches of government. And so it's kind of ironic that the spirit of laws and all history is circular, cyclical. And so the spirit of laws comes out in 1750. And then Harriet Beecher Stowe's book called Uncle Tom's Cabin comes out in 1850, 1852. So the Missouri Compromise is where the northern states and southern states agree that the police can go into either the north or the south to get a runaway slave. And so then that's all fine and dandy until Harriet Beecher Stowe's book comes out. And then you have northern men and northern women who read that book, 
who read that book, Uncle Tom's Cabin, and they go, no, 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 no. You are not sending your cops up in here into north into the into the uh, Union to the Northern Union. You are not sending police up here to grab slaves and bring them back down to the South. And so now, what happens in America is you have Northern men that when the cops come up to take the the black guy, the Northern men say you're not taking him, and that causes a lot of consternation. And so then you're going to have the which court is that? It's going to be the the. In 1857, you're going to have the Dred Scott case by the the Taney Court, T-A-N-E-Y. And the Taney Court, what they're going to do is they're going to, it's going to go to court because remember I told you about the Missouri Compromise, the 1850 North-South Compromise? What's going to happen is Dred Scott is from the South. I can't remember if he's from Texas, but when his owner dies, he then goes up into Chicago where the mother, where the where the the owner's widow is from, she's from Chicago, and they decide to bring their slave Dred Scott with them. And when Dred Scott gets up to Chicago, he goes, "Wait a minute, we're above the 50-50 line. I'm free." And so then it's called Scott versus Sanford. And so then the widow's brother, so the 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 brother-in-law of the dead husband or the brother of the widow. He fights the case against Dred Scott and says, you're my property. You're going to serve out the rest of your life serving my sister. And so that's Scott versus Stanford versus Stanford. That's that's the Dred Scott case of 1857. That is the true catalyst for the Civil War. When John Brown says, I will not tolerate this holding. And so John Brown starts the Civil War by attacking Harper's Ferry in 1859 and when he goes to attack General Lee's army in Harper's Ferry he loses and then the reason why I always talk about we need to have long talks about democracy these are just words from philosophers they're not mine this is Jean-Jacques Rousseau's social contract where he says people need to sit around and talk about the rules of democracy and have long-winded conversations about what's right and what's wrong in a democracy because we are a federal republic meaning that we're led by a Republican representation, meaning Republican, not the party, that we vote for a Republican as a representative. So that's where that comes from. And now, so now let me just give you the score here. The United States government has been adding states as long as we can keep a balance of slave states, free states, slave states, free states. The Dred Scott holding pushes John Brown over the edge. He attacks Harper's Ferry and the book uh, Uncle Tom's Cabin changes the mind of Northerners. And they go, no, 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 we're not down for the slavery anymore. And then the Civil War is going to kick off 1861. People will tell you it's over tariffs over the uh, I want to say the Walker tariff. Or Wait a minute. That's that's the bill that Polk passed. It's the it's the. I can't remember. So now, so now, but now here's the point of all this. The reason I'm telling you all these things is because for our entire lives, for your life and my life and anybody born before 2022, it doesn't matter if you're Gen X, it doesn't matter if you're a boomer or you're the greatest generation or you're a millennial or you're a Gen Z, none of it matters. Here's what matters. We have never, ever, been able to make the Bill of Rights become a reality. We've never lived by the Bill of Rights, not a single day in America, not once ever, never. It's never been a possibility until now. This camera that you're watching me through is your gun. When the police approach you, you point your camera, you shoot your camera at the police and you say, you're being exposed I plead the Fifth Amendment. And then you pull your trifold out and you show it to them and you say, I plead the Fifth and you don't talk. You can get it for free by putting free trifold into delete laws when you check out for the digital trifold. But we've never been able to have a, a society based on the rule of law, the real rule of law that I know and that a lot of others know and the actual freedoms promised to be upheld because your freedoms do not come from this government. Your freedoms are granted to you by God. By God. And this goes back to John Locke's philosophy of what's kind what's called divine morality. If you haven't seen Jeffrey Kaplan's lecture on divine morality, 
it's 35 minutes. I strongly recommend, especially if you're a Christian or you're a religious person, a Muslim, if you're, if you are a religious person and you believe in God, then you should listen to Jeffrey Kaplan's lecture, K-A-P-L-A-N, Jeffrey Kaplan's lecture on divine morality, and do me a favor, tell him Delete Laws sent you, because I've been trying to get an interview with Jeffrey Kaplan. He's one of my favorite professors that I've learned a lot of things from. I'm so super grateful to Jeffrey Kaplan. Thank you so much for all the lectures you've given. Anybody goes and watches Divine Morality on Jeffrey Kaplan's YouTube page, please tell him Delete Laws sent you, and that I wanna have an interview with him. So. Now, let me explain something when it comes to your rights given to you by God. What does that mean? That means that you're born with the inalienable right to life, liberty, property. You are born with the freedom of religion, with the freedom of press, with the freedom to assemble, with the freedom to petition, and freedom of speech. Those are your first big five freedoms. They are not written up during the Federalist Papers or the signing of the Declaration of Independence in 1776 or the finalization of the Constitution in 1793. None of those things come from a piece of paper. They come from God. That's why these guys are tyrants. Because under divine morality, you are a being of God. You are not to be abused by these men who put you in torture cuffs. When the camera, if the cop says to you, and we got to get rid of the dungeon system, but if you do have to go to the dungeon, which I don't know why you do, the cop can detain you with the camera. I got your face on camera. Are you going to, are you going to stay in this area? That's it. If you're going to shoot people, you're going to shoot them. If you're going to attack people, you're going to attack them. If you're going to do it on camera, you're criminally insane and nobody wants you on the street anyway. I'm for law and order. I'm not for your lawless crap. You're going to physically attack people on the street? You're a problem. And if you're a kid and you're under 22, you're under 25, you're under 18, you got testosterone. You guys are going to fight each other. What's the problem? If they're just going to fist fight, let them fight. So I'm telling you all of this information to get to the bigger point here, which I just said, but I'm just going to make it crystal clear. Before this little invention right here that I'm holding in my hands and I'm able to broadcast to tens of thousands of people and millions of people around the world. So on TikTok, the videos that I made from June till October were seen by 20 million people. 20 million times my videos were shared. That's how I got my first foothold in social media was on TikTok. And so this camera is our freedom. This camera upholds divine morality, that you are a being of God and you should not be abused. You should not be shackled like a pig, whether you got a drug problem or not. You should not be stuffed into the back of a dungeon and then taken to a dungeon where there's no paint on the walls. And like Sarah said earlier, you got to step over bodies because there's no room for you. Because your body doesn't matter. You're just another, there's someone on the other end of that dungeon making money off of you. Otherwise, why would they do it so much? Why would they put people in dungeons so much? Because they're making money off your soul being in a dungeon. I, I'm, just gonna, I'm just gonna say this because I haven't really talked about my own experience and so I will talk to you guys about it. I was baptized in the fire. I live in a fight. It's my favorite. If we're fighting, my favorite place to be. It's, it, I'm not gonna go into the details, but I was baptized in the fire. And I love to be in a fight. It's my favorite. Whether it be a fist fight where I got my teeth knocked out or whether it be with a mental fight between two people who are battling wits. I love it. I love it. It's my favorite. And I was a hardcore atheist for 20, 25 years. Hardcore atheist. And then I had an extraordinary spiritual experience that I'm not going to go into detail here because I don't want to cry. I met God face to face and I was touched. And let me tell you something. I read the Bible from cover to cover. I've scanned the Quran, Krishna, Buddhism, Hindi, you name the religion. I searched it because I was baptized in the fire growing up. I needed to find God and find out, don't I count? Don't I matter? And when I found God, and I'm not Christian, I'm not Muslim, I'm not religious, I believe in God. I started to do the math. I started to do the math. I'm sweating because I got emotional. 
I started to do the math on things. You are one of 300 billion sperm. You are one of 100 million eggs. You are now the, the chance of you being born that you exist is such a fraction of a possibility that you are a miracle. You do not belong being shackled. And according to John Locke's divine morality, your body doesn't belong to you. It belongs to God. That means nobody's allowed to abuse your body because your body's on loan by God. And if you follow John Locke's principles, which our country is based upon, we live under the, the, the natural law philosophies of John Locke today. Now, they, are, they have a prophylactic over them with the social contract by Rousseau and Montesquieu's checks and balances. You're such a miracle. Your life counts. You're such a miracle. Your life matters. You're such a miracle. How you feel really counts. If you walk around every day happy, it matters, man. Your life matters. You're a miracle. It's amazing you're here, right? Really. And so then... That's why you should not be stuffed in the back of a freaking car in shackles and taken away because you do drugs. It shouldn't happen to you. That should never happen to you. And because of those reasons, the, the journey that I went down, that's why I'm here. That's what I'm doing here. And for the good cops out there, why, why'd you sign up for that job? You're taking miracles to a dungeon. And then you want me to respect you and say, not all cops are bad. You take people to a dungeon, brother. <laughs> I got no respect for you. None. You're a beta male. And you're a loser female. You're, you're, you're a weak female if you sign up to be a pig. So this camera is the new way that we ensure God's rules of life, which are clearly defined in the Constitution and the Bill of Rights of America. And only there. No other country has God's list. When you look at the Bill of Rights, don't think that that was written by Thomas Jefferson or the Big Five, the Big Five uh, founding fathers they put into a room together. That was, that was the manifestation of God. I don't want these things. I sound like a crazy person. I'm just giving you guys the facts. I'm telling you guys my history so that you truly understand. This camera is your freedom. You film these dirty pigs and you tell them, you've been exposed. I plead the fifth. And disrespect the cops here. Run them out of town. I'll be at Trader's Cafe tomorrow all day after 10 a.m., 10.30 a.m. I'm always late, so... 10.30, 10.45, whenever. I got a meeting uh, in another part of town with people who want to remain anonymous early. So I'm going to go meet with those people anonymously in the morning. Um, if you guys go to my website, Delete Laws, you can get the digital trifold for free by putting in free trifold when you check out for the digital one. For those of you who can afford to buy the hard copy one, it's on indestructible paper. Get that trifold, get it in your car, get it in every car you have. And when the cops come up, you pull the trifold out and you plead the fifth immediately. Speaking to these rat bastards has done nobody any good. It never does any good. And for those people who are like, oh, I've had plenty of running cops. I've had no problems. Good for you, bro. Good for you. I'm the way I am because these guys abused me. I'm the way I am because they no-knock raided my home for no reason. The cops could have texted me and said, dude, we want to arrest you. And I would have said, where are you? I'll come right to you. But they didn't. They want to put on their war gear and kick your door down. Because let me tell you something. When I'm governor, I'm going to end all invasions. No more home invasions. Because the camera, we concede you. If we need you that bad, we put a camera at the front of your house, put an officer to watch it, and then we seed you. No food can go in. No water can come out. We don't need to kick your door down with the tack dogs. We're going to wait for you to come out. You got to come out sometime. If you're that bad, we're going to get you. You can't even rob a house and run down the street. The ring network will get you. This is our new thing. And the new system is called transparency, which I have a whole plan I'm going to lay out. You think the stuff I told you now is interesting? Wait until you see the new system that I had devised from top to bottom of how, of how transparency and education works in America. 
I hope that some of you will have a newfound respect for me and for the process I've gone down and how many years I've thought about how to fix this bullshit system. I hope that you guys respect what I'm gonna show you guys. I'm gonna do that when I leave here and I go back to Dallas, be back in Dallas for a few days over Louisiana, Arkansas. There's people who need help. And so I'm gonna go there and I'm gonna shut those cops down. That's what I'm gonna do. And you dirty pigs who have been doing this to these people in Ironton, you dirty sheriffs, Jason Newman, lawless, lawless. You see Lawless's face today when I said cops are scum. You guys are the worst people on earth. He kind of grimaced. Lawless, you wouldn't let us see your jail. She said there's bodies stacked on top of people. I said, let's see it. Oh no, come back on visiting day. <laughs> the Mullen Commission, 1994. In one of the interviews, the, the, the supervisor says... As soon as we found out that there was oversight coming in, as soon as we found out that there was a new third party coming in, everything got cleaned up. Everybody's books got cleaned up. The reports got cleaned up. Everything got cleaned up. Just knowing oversight was coming. But now this camera changes everything. Everything. I'll be at Trader's Cafe all day tomorrow. If you guys see some armed men outside, they have inv they volunteered. They've contacted me and said, we want to protect you. We're going to come down Oh, one gentleman said today, he said, I'm going to be everywhere you go with my pistol until you go. So, because people are sick of it. We're sick of it. I need to hear your story on camera. Texting and email is not going to work. I have too many texts and too many emails. I can't get back to all the people that these good cops have cheated. And if you guys are good, stop talking shit about me on Facebook. Just stop it. I'm running out the bad ones. If you believe that lie is true, ask the blind man. He saw it too. All right. I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to check in. I literally have had 12 hours of sleep in four days. I've got to get some sleep tonight. So it's nine o'clock now. If I go to sleep now, I'll sleep till six or seven. I've got to get some sleep. I'm exhausted. So listen, your rights come from God. They don't come from a pen and a paper. You're free. You're a free person. You shouldn't be persecuted and prosecuted. You shouldn't be. All right. If you're a violent thug, I don't want you on the streets either. Got to be a place for you. Doesn't have to be right here. Right? Okay. All right. All right. I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for your time. I really appreciate it. You guys go to my website, Delete Laws. Pick up my ebook, my e-poster. Thank you for the support. If you can't afford it, I give it away for free every couple weeks anyway. I said I was going to give the trifold away for free. I'm doing just that. Free trifold. You get the digital download for free, print it out. When the cop comes up, you just show it to him. I'm not going to talk. I got a Fifth Amendment right. I'm not going to talk. I plead the Fifth Amendment right there. My rights are unequivocal. I'm not going to talk. I'm not going to talk. D didn't, hasn't done anybody any good so far. <laughs> All right. I'm out of here, guys. Thanks for your time tonight. God bless you. Traders tomorrow. I'll see you guys, everybody. All right. I'll see you tomorrow. Later.